Burning Abyss. Most certainly one of the more infamous decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, the deck seems like it would die and BAM, new amazing support for the archetype comes out of nowhere, keeping it alive for like, I don't know, a good extra year or so? Right now is no different, and coming out in Dark Neo Storm is Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. This Link monster does a lot for Burning Abyss, and while not necessarily making it tier 1, it most certainly makes this deck much crazier. Whether because of the inherent fact that Burning Abyss is still a solid deck, Cherubini itself, or the potential engines you can play like the Phantom Knight, Orcus, and World Chalice slash Guard Dragon engines, in this video, I'll be discussing why Burning Abyss is definitely crazy right now. To understand the rest of the video, we first need to understand what floating is in the context of Yu-Gi-Oh, and understand what Burning Abyss does, and why this deck could still be relevant. Floating in card games is when a card essentially replaces itself, typically in the form of a replacement card. An older example of this is a card like Reborn Tengu, which when it leaves the field will special summon another copy of Reborn Tengu from your deck. Floating effects have evolved over time and become superior, for example with the Thunder Dragon sequencing into more and more pluses, but Reborn Tengu is still a perfect example of what a card does when it floats. So now that we know what floating is, let's talk about Burning Abyss. For starters, Burning Abyss is a level 3 focused extra deck based archetype, revolving around using level 3 monsters to access powerful extra deck monsters like, for example, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss, Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss, and the new Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss, which we'll discuss later. Each of these extra deck monsters help you continue to float into more resources in some way, typically to send a Burning Abyss main deck monster to the graveyard. The main deck Burning Abyss monsters from there have effects that will trigger when sent to the graveyard, with the common three being Skarm, which will add a level 3 dark theme during the end phase, in most cases we will grab Tour Guide from the Underworld from our deck, Seer, which will special summon a Burning Abyss monster from the graveyard, and Graph, which will special summon one Burning Abyss monster from the deck. We also have utility Burning Abyss monsters, like bouncing a spell slash trap to the hand and banishing a monster until the end phase. While having all of these floating effects when sent to the graveyard, the real reason why this deck has been so capable the past few years is because all of the main deck monsters can special summon themselves from the hand if you control no spells or traps. The reason I say this is so relevant is because if we were to take Burning Abyss and they just had their grave effects, then they wouldn't nearly be as good because most of the time they would just be stuck in your hand, but because we can special summon them from the hand, that just makes them less of a brick and you're actually able to do stuff with them. Regardless of you only being able to use one effect per turn between the special summon effect and the when it's sent to the graveyard effect, they easily compensate by having immense flexibility. You can normal summon a burning abyss monster and be able to use its grave effect from there for example. The one drawback with the main deck monsters is if you control a non-Burning Abyss monster, then every main deck Burning Abyss monster will blow themselves up. Obviously, this isn't a good effect to have, but over time these self-destruction effects have become more and more irrelevant. The main focus of the deck has entirely been put on Dante, a card which at first doesn't seem that great, but serves to be an effective boss monster for its role. It not only can mill 3 cards, which fuels the previously mentioned main deck Burning Abyss monster effects, but when it's sent to the graveyard, you get to recur a Burning Abyss monster from the graveyard, also being a floater in the end. Dante, back in the day, essentially gave Burning Abyss so many resources to work with because it's an annoying body to deal with, but fuels your engine further and replaces itself. It's definitely strong and is a staple in Burning Abyss. One thing to note about Dante is it enables the Dante Seer loop, which is where Dante adds back Seer to hand, and Seer will special summon from the graveyard Dante. Then, when Dante leaves the field again, it will add back Seer, and you can repeat the process from there. This is a core idea you need to know for Burning Abyss, so I thought I should mention it. We also have extra deck cards like Virgil, which shuffles cards from your opponent's graveyard or field by discarding a Burning Abyss monster, and again, not only fueling your Burning Abyss monster effects, but it will also gain value out of it. When it's destroyed by battle or card effect as well, you will get a draw, which also makes Virgil a floater. The last important extra deck monster to note before we dive into Cherubini is Beatrice. Beatrice was a big deal for Burning Abyss, not only being a foolish burial for anything, but will also again float into a Burning Abyss extra deck monster, most notably the fusion of the archetype, Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss. 
Pilgrim, again, fuels your strategy by not being targetable, pitches a Burning Abyss from hand to draw one, and rips a card out of your opponent's hand when it's dealt with. As you can probably tell, these cards are very solid and work very well together. One of the most interesting things is how many ways you can play this deck, however, and cards like Dante generically milling or Beatrice sending anything to grave really impacts the variancy of this archetype. There's still one more card to talk about, however, and that's the new addition to the deck, Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. Before we talk about Cherubini, however, if you're enjoying this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date with my latest videos. Also, remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Let's see if we can break 300 likes on this video. Lastly, if you guys want to support the channel in a way that gets you benefits, like more exclusive content from me where I talk about things I wouldn't make into videos, like the Valkyrie archetype in Dark Neo Storm, make sure to check out my Patreon, which will be a link in the description. New tiers are coming soon. Getting back to Cherubini, this card is absolutely amazing. And with it being the new addition, let's break it down. It requires two level 3 monsters as material meaning you can summon this instead of a Dante since they have the same required materials. We're mainly in it for its effects, however, which starts by preventing monsters it points to from being destroyed by card effects. This may not seem too relevant at first, but considering every main deck Burning Abyss monster can special summon themselves, and they kind of blow themselves up if you control a non-Burning Abyss monster, I would say that effect's pretty good, and can be pretty relevant. The main appeal with Cherubini is its effect to send any level 3 monster from your deck to the graveyard. If you don't understand how relevant this type of effect is for Burning Abyss, let me give you some context. Every Burning Abyss monster is a level 3, and they have an effect when sent to the graveyard. The main card you're going to send is Graph, to not only help Link spam, but get you access to other Burning Abyss effects, including Seer to recur, for example, the Cherubini you used, Farfa, and Cowl Cab, which help you clear problematic cards for a brief period, or Skarm, getting you more resources during the end phase. What's important here is Cherubini is not only a 1 card link 3 with Graph, but it sends any level 3 in the game, which expands the horizons of what this card is capable of. A perfect example is with Karba Nedin, a level 3 dinosaur that can banish itself to special summon a level 7 or lower normal dragon monster from the deck. We'll talk about this card a bit more later in unison with the Guard Dragons. You can also send cards like Steam the Cloak and Edge Gym Sabers depending on the rest of your hand, and honestly whatever you need in that situation. In a pure build, we're using Cherubini for the arrows, but enabling Dante access with those said arrows. In more non-pure builds, we're using Cherubini as an enabler for different strings of combos. Speaking of this fact, Cherubini is very generic if you couldn't tell. Any two level 3 monsters enable Cherubini to get even more access. We can very easily play this card in different strategies depending on the circumstance, and do more shenanigans. If you do need a dragon tuner, then this card has you covered. Want an easy link 3 with Cherubini to be revived? Well, this card again has you covered. Most certainly, however, this card is good for Burning Abyss, and I'll be focusing more on the Burning Abyss methods of using this card rather than a generic monster. This foolish effect also gives a Burning Abyss monster attack and defense, which also isn't bad at all. It can help you get over problem monsters that you couldn't necessarily do otherwise. Lastly, Cherubini has a third effect, which states if this card on the field would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can send one other card you control to the graveyard instead. This gives you a vibe that you want to keep this monster on the field as long as possible. I don't necessarily agree with that statement, but because this deck floats so much inherently, and the amount of combos you can perform with Cherubini, it probably won't stay on the field for long, but it's definitely something to note. So now that we've discussed Cherubini as a card, let's talk about the engines this card enables for Burning Abyss. Starting with the most popular option would be the Phantom Knight engine. This pathway is a great option because Cherubini sets up a 1 card bard, and will revive the Cherubini you just used for Link Summoning. From there, Bard can enable more pathways. You can grab two Fog Blades, a Silent Boots as an additional level 3 for Dante, and then the second Fog Blade, maybe you want a level 4, well then Bard is great for that. Bard alone is a superb card, and Cherubini makes it that much easier to access. But then, what if we did even more than just Bard plus Cherubini? 
Enter the Orcist Engine. At the end of a standalone Cherubini combo, you have Bard and two monsters, those being Cherubini and Silent Boots. Unless you grab Shade Brigandine, which in this case you will have three monsters ignoring the Bard. With it, if we then use two of the three monsters for Link material, and summon a Nightmare, linking into Mermaid, and performing an Orcus combo from there. Now, you may be saying, isn't that redundant because you could've just summoned Mermaid from the start and have Orcus combo with the bar? Well, not necessarily. At any point, we can do the Orcus combo. We can, instead of first linking for Bard, we can Orcus combo and then have a free Cherubini as a follow-up for the next turn. Whatever we're sending off of Cherubini can be used as an extender regardless if we can get access to another monster beforehand. So, there are many ways to approach the Orcus combo in Burning Abyss with Cherubini nowadays. And while I may not have any Orcus Burning Abyss combos offhand, there are a plethora of ways to make crazy combos with Burning Abyss because of Cherubini. Speaking of crazy combos, there is one more variant which I feel is under the radar right now. So the last variant I want to talk about is the Guard Dragon World Chalice Burning Abyss variant. The idea relates back to what I was saying about Carboneddon and how Cherubini is generic. The idea is Carboneddon gets us a level 2 Dragon Normal Tuner, which is the perfect criteria for a combo sequence that ends on at least 5 disruptions without the need of something like Orcus cards for example. This tuner gets us access to Ib, the World Chalice Justiciar, and if you haven't seen it yet, I have a video about Ib which you should go check out right after this video. It then gets us World Legacy Guard Dragon or Succession, and in unison with Cherubini to enable Guard Dragons, Bard, and then some. If you want a more in-depth video about this crazy variant, I'll have a video on the channel coming up about this wild variant, so make sure you subscribe and tune in for that video. Burning Abyss is remarkable. Well, maybe it's because it keeps getting amazing support, or maybe the deck is just inherently too good for its own right, not only is Burning Abyss crazy right now because of how good of a deck it is, but Cherubini just makes it that much crazier. Thanks for watching.